Hey legends, welcome along to Hellmouth Hotline. We are going to get into a little review on the Hammer Collection in this episode. This is a movie called The Horror of Frankenstein. Uh, absolutely love this box set. If you have never checked out uh, any of the Hammer movies, the classic Hammer movies, I would highly recommend you checking out the Hammer Collection. The... The DVD box set of it now is an incredibly uh, inexpensive thing to get your hands on. And if you're relatively new to the whole horror genre now, in all honesty, I'm, I'm a movie nerd, lifelong movie nerd. But horror has never really been my go-to when it comes to sitting down to watch movies, which is... Which is a reason why I wanted to get into this podcast, which is to give me an excuse to get into the the horror the horror genre a little bit more. And if you are similar <coughs> and uh, you're interested and you've never really gotten into it, the Hammer Collection is a great little easy introduction to it. You know, it's by today's standards, it's not overly gory. Uh, but the stories, the storytelling is absolutely fantastic. And the vast majority of these movies, but you do, in all honesty, you do get the odd plum here and there. But it's it's all subjective to the viewer. And uh, I absolutely love these movies. So let's get into this little review and I hope you enjoy the show. This is... A little movie from 1970 called The Horror of Frankenstein and this one here um, for a lead character in a movie I kind of like there to be a little bit of you know something that you can like about the character even though the character of Victor Frankenstein is a psychotic friggin scientist that's trying to resurrect the dead you kind of want something to be, you know, likeable about him. But the lead character in this, uh, Ralph Bates as Victor Frankenstein, is highly, highly unlikable. Didn't like him in the slightest in this movie. Uh, I found him very, very irritating. But uh, as you get through the movie, you can see why his character is kind of like that. It also stars. Kit O'Mara, Veronica Carlson, Dennis Price, John Finch, Bernard Archard, Graham James, James Hater, Joan Rice. This is getting under real back characters as well. Um, the monster, in particular, is the highlight of this movie because uh, whenever I <laughs> Whenever I started watching this movie, and I'm the same with pretty much everything that I'm reviewing at the point I sit down and watch it. I don't want to go into it with any spoilers. I want to go into it and just enjoy the movie for what it is. And it's very, I would say over three quarters of the way into the film before you actually get to see the monster. And the monster isn't really scary in this movie. But uh, when I seen who it was, I was just like, that face is so flippin' familiar. And it turns out it's Darth Vader himself. David Prowse is Frankenstein's monster in this movie. And uh, of course you're probably sitting thinking to yourself, David Prowse? You recognised his face? How could you recognise his face? It was underneath a mask the whole time. And even in... Return of the Jedi, whenever they unmasked Darth Vader, it wasn't David Prowse that was actually playing the unmasked Vader. Well, um, when I was a kid, kind of before my time, uh, well, actually, I think it was before my time, and if not, I was incredibly young, but I can remember my brother saying at one point when uh, I was watching Star Wars, uh, he was like, that's the Green Cross Code, man. And I'm like, who's the Green Cross Code man? And it wasn't until 
I was actually shown on TV because whenever I was a kid there was no internet, there was no running and checking things up. If you wanted to find something out, you know, you couldn't like go on to Google and just say, hmm, give me my mobular telephone and we'll work out what is going on here. So he had told me this for years, the Green Cross Code Man, and I looked it up online. Uh, that's it on TV one night. And it was like an advertisement for children crossing the road. That was called the Green Cross Code. Just stop, look and listen when you're crossing the road. And it was this guy was kind of like a superhero that turned up. You know, kids would be standing on the side of the street and they're about to cross the road and we're not really sure how. And this guy would turn up and he'd have like a superhero costume on him. I do you recall it was like green and white, kind of like a Superman sort of thing, but there was no cape. Uh, but he had this like, uh, symbol on his chest anyway, and like, you know, of course, you know what Darth Vader's ball does, so he turns up and, hmm, you want to cross the road? Do you know the Green Cross code? Right, we're getting completely off track here. We're over four minutes into this review, and I haven't gone into the volume whatsoever. Um, this is a different take on Victor Frankenstein. It, start, it picks up with him as a teenager. Uh, in high school, he's, he's a genius, of course, um, uh, you find out just how evil a person he is when he kills his own father so he can inherit the title and the fortune to go to university to further his education to figure out how he can actually learn how to uh, resurrect the dead and whatnot. So he, he, he goes off, learns a little bit more at university, drops out, brings one of his college mates back with him, starts setting up in their castle and uh, he gets a guy to go out and start stealing body parts and he starts to build this monster. And he has everything, his whole lab set up in, in a genius way to get rid of uh, unused body parts. He's got like a big vat where he pours in like uh, acid into the top and does away with flesh and stuff that he doesn't need, which plays a big part at the end of the movie. So eventually, he gets the monster built. Um, along the way, he kills different people that find out the secret and what he's doing. Uh, the grave robber that's stealing the body parts for him, he ends up getting into the vat. Acid poured him, gets rid of him. And uh, yes, he, when he does eventually get the monster up and going, and David Prowse as the monster is hilarious because Frankenstein's monster should be a, a creature that inspires fear and people whenever you see him, but David Prowse, in all fairness, at the time this film was made, uh, he was a huge hulk of a man. Giant, tall, you know, muscular, but he was a very, very much a pretty boy. And he just, he did not inspire the fear. When you looked into the, the face of this monster, you're just going, oh, you're so flipping cute. Uh, but uh, yes, by the end of the movie, uh, Victor Frankenstein's kind of using the monster to like, pick people off that are going to out a secret and whatnot. And it's actually the grave robber's wife that comes to the castle to figure out where her husband went. Because uh, as far as she's concerned, he went out and just completely disappeared. And the last place he was going was the Victor Frankenstein's place for body parts because she was in on it. She was like she uh, he was out digging up graves. She was in there to the elbows with him digging up body parts so Victor sends out the, the monster after her and uh, kills her and again later on in the movie escapes gets out of the, the castle he keeps him locked up in the like a little dungeon down in the basement sort of the thing and the monster escapes goes out in a bit of a rampage again and he ends up getting into this house that he finds in the woods and there's this young girl probably no more than 12 years old and uh, you hear her screaming and the wreckage going on in the house and the, the monster walks out of the house again doesn't kill her it scares the crap out of her it does hurt her but uh, she survives her father uh, 
gets her, they escape, run away, they're looking for the police and whatnot. Um, at this point, Frankenstein has been rounded up again by Victor. He's brought back into the castle and he's, he's in the, uh, the lab with Frankenstein as the police turn up with the father and the young girl. And uh, they come and they want to search the place. So, of course, at this point, the monster is up in his lab, nowhere near the basement where he's going to keep some hidden on it. And uh, he, he tries to hide the monster uh, and jacks him to put him to sleep. And he's a very smug character, Frankenstein, in this one. And at this stage, you know, we're very close to the end of the movie. We're like, we're mere minutes from it wrapping up and you're kind of like, oh, how are they going to do away with the monster here sort of thing because you're kind of thinking at this point this is they're going to this is the point in the movie where they usually they could round up the mob and they would come to the castle and then they would like you know, set fire to something and burn the monster but while the police are on they're going to search the place and uh frankenstein is like you know i've done nothing wrong you can't search this place without a warrant um you know he has the whole thing is you know he's going to use the law to get the police out of the castle that he can hide the monster somewhere but uh, while he's having the back and forth with the police and the father of this young girl she's messing about with different things in this lab and he's like little girl stop doing that sort of thing and she goes over towards the big vat where he gets rid of the body parts and she's pulling levers and stuff and she pulls this one that tips all the acid into the thing and Frankenstein freaks out but he can say nothing because he knows that's where he was hiding the monster at so like his whole attempt at stealing body parts and creating the monster and bringing it to life and whatnot is completely undone in a matter of mere seconds by a small child and it's just it's poetic justice at the end of the movie the way it finishes off and uh, it ends off him climbing up over the, the vat and looking on and you see all this acid and bubbling and whatnot, then the two big shoes pop up and start floating on the surface. That's where it ends off at. And that is, again, an incredibly vague report on this movie. But it is one that's well worth watching, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I would have liked the character of Victor Frankenstein in this movie to be a little bit more likeable. Uh, even though he's a head case and nut job, just a crazy scientist that you, know, you really shouldn't like. But the character of Fragen Victor Frankenstein, I feel in a way should have a little bit of something that you can kind of connect to. You know, as him being the actual like lead in the movie. So beyond that there, it's a very good film. I would highly recommend it. Go and check it out. This has been a production of Coins Edge Media. Thank you so much for listening.